200 kilometers southeast of Tajikistan's capital, Dushanbe, lies the region of Eastern Catalan. Home to 650,000 residents, the landscape is characteristically mountainous and fragile. With sparse employment opportunities, agriculture plays a very large role in household livelihood systems. Here, wheat and livestock provide important sources of food and income. As a republic of the Soviet Union, Tajikistan benefited significantly from ties to Moscow and other Soviet republics. Asphalt roads, industrialization, and large-scale agriculture were characteristic of the Soviet period. Electricity and natural gas were in abundant supply, together with basic amenities for ensuring a reasonable standard of living. Breakup from the Soviet Union and independence in 1991 brought much hardship to the fledgling republic. A long and protracted civil war destroyed much of the prevailing infrastructure. Many Russian and non-Tajik nationals fled. Industrial production declined, and with it came significant unemployment. Electrical transmission, as well as supplies of natural gas, were disrupted. In regions such as eastern Catalan, wood became the prominent source for heating and cooking for many rural families in the cold winter months. As a result, forested areas have decreased nationally from 30% of the total land area to less than 3% today. In eastern Catalan, the situation is even worse. In addition to an increased demand for wood, pressure on natural resources came from another source. The need to feed a growing population of livestock has put undue pressure on mountain pastures. Poor agricultural production practices in the summer and autumn seasons have led to a degeneration of soil. What remains is weak and infertile ground. This, together with deforestation and increased livestock numbers, creates a dangerous situation in the spring. Spring rains, together with melting snow, lead to landslides and flooding. Climate change is something which is coming slowly, but in Central Asia it has come faster than in other places. This is um, mostly seen by um, extreme flash floods, which are happening in spring, and suddenly precipitation uh, comes down, and through this very fragile hills, which are uh, already made more fragile because of less forest cover, a lot of soil comes down and a lot of um, avalanches happen and sometimes flush away whole, whole villages. 
при ливневых дождях за первые 5 или 10 минут выпадает гораздо больше количество миллиметров осадков. Но проблема в том, что у нас количество осадков выпадает неравномерно. Максимум выпадает в зимний-весенний период. Летом практически не выпадает, там 2-3 месяца. Variability in precipitation is becoming more prominent. Summers are drier and hotter. Rains in the spring are more intensive and less in the summer months when they are needed for agriculture. Rather than adapting to climate change through changing their existing production practices, communities continue to increase the risk of natural disasters. The people who are living downstream, they are creating a disaster for themselves. These guys are coming here. First they came here, they cut all the bushes, all the trees, they used them like a fuel wood. And after they dig down the roots of those bushes and trees, they started to level the land and to plant the, here wheat. And uh, that's one issue. The second issue is that these people started to plow the land from up down. So not horizontally, but they plowed it vertically. When it's raining, all the topsoil is washed down. The real side usually it's a beginning of the disaster and beginning of the gully because when the waters are concentrating into the real, they speeding up. The speed of the water is becoming high as these reels are very small and the gullies are very tight. So the water is speeding and everything which is there, it will be washed down. Land management in Tajikistan is a problem because um, there is a lack of knowledge. In, in Soviet times, uh, there was a lot of, um, um, everybody was part of, of one institution or another, be that uh, a coal force working in agriculture, livestock, forestry, or being part of a factory or being part of, of the public service system. Um, after that system collapsed, suddenly um, a lot of these uh, these opportunities uh, went away. People suddenly had to learn farming on their own without a, a brigadier of the old system telling them what to do. This is a result of the land management upstream. As you see on the top, these reels in galleys in erosion, all they are concentrating in one point, all the water is coming to one point and you get these gullies over here. Sooner or later, all those lands which the guys has lands over top, all the lands will be like this in the middle. One result of continued variation in precipitation is a dependency on wheat. Wheat is important for rural households. In addition to straw for livestock, it provides flour for bread, an important component of household diets in poor communities. With a bit of wheat, you can always bake your own bread. Reducing the dependency on wheat, however, in order to mitigate degradation, requires alternative sources of income. Dried fruits from local orchards that are destined for different markets, nationally and for export, is one example. Caritas Switzerland through its program in Eastern Catalon, supports entrepreneurs who are willing to take managed risks. One of these entrepreneurs is Sajida, a 55-year-old resident of Muminabad, who is a member of a women's food drying association. <laughs> باید که اینا گردی همی کرخونه مونه محکم کردیم باید یک کرخونه با کر کردی با میوه و سبزه بود برای کنسیر و کنانی با مخصه داریم که بسوزیم ای حواس من شیدنی همی وقتی که خریدور خن مونه یافتیم وقتی که ادام همی سومکی یافت بود برای همی زندگی همار همی مبلغ های فرزند همی میبره و مکتب و برای همی خیلی بسیار مودر و حواس من شیدن
Opportunities such as these are urgently needed in Eastern Catalan. Jobs are limited and unemployment is high. Many Tajiks do not see any other options other than migrating to Russia, where they often work illegally and under poor conditions. It's, it's easy to imagine if, if you have a family and without where the husband is not is not present then uh, it's, um, it's it's difficult for many many young women especially um, and uh, bringing up children on their own uh, to managing the livestock managing the household managing all all aspects of daily life at the same time, being a very traditional um, uh, society in Tajikistan, this is um, um, not really customary for women to take so, such a strong role. So this, this of course, often creates, creates frictions and uh, is, is a difficult thing to, um, to, to face for, for, uh, for families. And the sum nayol khadas bio, but gad dil mizik moshin khay korda mira sin chikil bokhay. Bayad dil mizik korda mira uja. Ay farzan dur, ay zan dur, ay khunaw dar dur, ay watan dur. For those who do not choose to emigrate, agriculture and livestock are the main sources of income. Chorvoni <laughs> Pista, Sitasar, Moli Maidadora, Bahoy, Misnoki, Tulmik Shuan, Batiramora, Baroshan, Kalonishan. I serve in Ofrukta, Zinda Gersuna, Peshmibara. Livestock provides income as well as security. In times of need, animals can be sold. The problem is that the number of animals has increased substantially. There is a lack of effective control on grazing. With decreasing feed sources, there is increasing pressure on pastures. This overgrazing leads to further degradation and potential for increased landslides and flooding. Like other households, Sajida's family maintains livestock, but unlike others, she does not need to send them to high pastures for grazing. Leaves from her orchard and grasses growing between trees provide enough feed for the family's small number of sheep. <laughs> I 
چرا بیمون نبودن ایمون میشه In so a time, the forestry agency was working here. They planted huge area with walnuts. Walnuts usually they are very big trees, which have a very big root system. They are holding up to 25 square meters. But all these walnuts, they were cut and they were used as a fuel for cooking and, uh, and uh, uh, heating purposes. And uh, on the top of that, people started to bring the livestock here and all the uh, soil was destroyed. You can see the goats are grazing in a high steep slopes and uh, some people they have a land over here and they just made a trench, digging a trench around the lands in order not to allow the livestock to come in and uh, when it's raining the water is concentrating into these trenches and you get runoff and you get uh, speeding water. This is the outcome of the trench, which is doing this. You see huge area and here already started. And if you see to the walnut, walnut has a very big root system and somebody was cutting in the root of the walnut because the walnut was holding this area. So it started from down, you see, and it came up. So here, thousand cubic of soil, which was transported down, only from one gully. And number two starts downstream. The reason, because the farmers are digging a trench around their plot. That's the main reason. And this is the outcome. You see, during six, seven years it's happened. And this poor tree, Pua tree is the only one which is holding, it has only one root, which is strong one, holding its street. If you cut it, every slope, all this stuff will go down. And after 20-30 years, with such a temp of degradation of land and pastoral resources, we will come to the fact that some of the remains of the pastoral resources will be preserved in some of the fields and in the fields, in the fields part. В связи с этим увеличится и количество, и интенсивность стихийных бедствий. The village Porvor, hard to reach in a remote valley within the deep south of Tajikistan, the Afghani border is only a stone's throw away. Approaching the village, it soon becomes clear that something has happened. Last spring, a flood hit Porvor. Water flowed with rage, threatening houses and lives. Large-scale destruction ensued. Several months later, villagers are still repairing the only road connecting them to the rest of the country. With limited sources of support and income, the burden of cleanup is left on the shoulders of the community. Debris and sediment has accumulated as far as the eye can see. <laughs> بعد نیگو کردم کی سیل خیلی بارون کرد تا چند زیاد شدم این بارون بعد ترسیدم گفتم و شوهرم رو که خیز که خیلی سیل آمده استه می ترسم تیز دایی در افتم در خونه را ایلا کردم نیگو کردم که ببانیه خیلی سیل در آمده استه داویدم با گفتم بخیز که سیل آمد داویدم در خونه را ایلا کردم که به جانی سیل اومد بعد تیز کودکو را گرفتیم خیلی برومیم پس خونه را دیدیم همه خیلی رنگی دریو دیگه خیلی رای سیل رو ما گرفتن نتوانستیم رفته رفته هم دیوارا با مسافه یک نیم متر با پانوی و یک متر زیادتر بلندی دیوار خانه را سراخ کردم، منطقه که از بیتون کردگی هست 
همجره شروخ کرده داخل خانه شد در این وقت کودکو سه تا کودک مادر شد من خودم در خانه کودکو خواب بودم باز ما کودکو را گرفته خانه همسایه بردیم و آب با وسطه این لای سنگ و شغل و لای داخل وارد خانه شد یه ما دیگان چیز چورا را کار نگرفته فقط کودکو را نجد دادیم به خانه همسایه بردیم The house was so badly damaged that it was no longer inhabitable. It took all of their hard-earned savings and support from neighbors and friends to rebuild from the ground up. Albatta, muskilas vakti ki odam yak yak bora nare yak laza az hamachis dur memonat na khona istikomati na yak sar libos. نایک تجدیدات دیگر میکن در همین لحظه مشکل ترین از همه احساسات فقط برای همین اهل اویده را نگاه داشتم فکر میکنی که دیگر تمام چیزی اگر تیلو هم که میشی در خونه دیگر ما تیلو در همیت نمیدودیم او شب هم خیلی بارون سخت گرفت ترسیده او نمیاد شب پیش وی مردک مخواهی میگم که بخیست که بارون سخت کرده سه می ترسم خیلی اکو ترس اولی بحار ده و بارون های نه چی می آیان می ترسم گودکا وقتی که بارون شوه می گریزن نه می ستن خانه ده می ترسن می گم می ترسم اما شباخی خواب بدن وی ها وقتی که وی ها روی دار کردیم وی ها ترس ورشتن می ترسم دزاسترز کرییدید بای من floods as nature's reaction to human intervention. Most villagers understand the possible consequences of their actions on themselves and their communities. However, they often have few alternatives. پیچکاد حالا اون که خونه گرم میسوزه، های بود چقدر دن خیلی نونی گرم. میسوز با قوای بارکم نمیشه. هست ای اولای کی میسوز دسته اولا هند ای خونه میسوز. با نی هست ای دخوفکه، با دخوفکه خد نبخت نمیشه. میسوز قوای بار دمیزن. ما هم ازم نکنیم نیاریم زندگی کن نمیتونیم. Two members of Sajida's women's group have an appointment at the local bank. Culturally, it is men who handle this responsibility. Dealing with banks is not something that many rural women are familiar with. The women have asked Sajida to accompany them for advice. In trainings organized by Caritas Switzerland, Sajida learned how to access financing. She learned that micro-investments in a canning machine or in beehives can be the start of a profitable small business. Three years ago, Sajida and her husband invested in two bee colonies. Only a small investment, but a successful one at that. Today, they have 50 colonies and produce over a ton of honey every year. چروا لکه طبیعت خراب میکنن فایده زنبور هم که خیلی است که هم یک مرتب خراب میتی که برای بچه خوبوندنش او خراب همشه بود میکنه حساب خودش ما امی همه که امی خانه مونده است همه حساب یعنی زنبور ما امی اصل که ما وقتی که تیار میکنیم برابر در قریب تیلا باری اصل های خوی زنبور در حالت خوب فقط باید که تو با نایی با هرک شده شدن خوب کنن. سجیده پلانس تو ترین ده ممبرز اف هر گروپ این بی کیپنگ. هنی از گود منی، و منی مینز اندپندنس، اسپیشلی فر ویمن. 
Caritas Switzerland pays particular attention to the inclusion of women in all project initiatives. In rural areas, women are often marginalized because of a conservative attitude towards women's role in society. A respectful understanding of roles within the household, such as with Sajida and her husband Bobo John, is not often found. Orchards, you get comprehensive uh, benefit. You can plant whatever you want in the middle of the trees. So right now your trees are growing, you get the same productivity because you are cultivating in between of the rows. And after three, four years, you produce also your wood, fuel wood from there. After five years, you produce your fruits. You sell, you make a lot of money. And at the same time, of course, your tree is uh, sucking water. The orchards which you have, they break down the speed of the rain, the drops. They are break down, they are coming down to the land through, through the body of the tree. And then slowly they come into the soil. If they come small to the soil, they infiltrate. Of course, downstream you get less runoff. Private orchards, a solution to prevent land degradation and fight unemployment at the same time. From from the point of view of of the people we work with, we could say we we are like like an extended family member. Now in extended families, you often have some kind of uncle who has a little bit more money, so he gives you some some cash. Um, often you have some some grandfather who gives you advice, and often you have uh, some siblings you can you can um, use as a punching bag to to um, spar new ideas with and to to find solutions to problems. Agar ki to daskiri na mishit mu ikhadar foida zindagi ajana miuftim misol majbur misha ki bol asia braya kor kniu mu khay mazob chhelo khay. I have to do it. I have in
firewood, milk, and flour, all acquired without disturbing nature. A happy home with hope for the next generation. Children and parents pass the night without fear of a natural disaster. Private interests and the health of nature, there is a connection. When people embrace the balance between profitable livelihoods and a stable environment, then with the right support at the right time, anything is possible. <laughs>